do you guys know what is the weakest link in cybersecurity? It is not the device you use. It is not the operating system you use. It is not even the antivirus or firewall you use. The weakest link in cybersecurity are you guys, the human beings. Around 95% of cyber attacks happen due to human error. See, hacking is a difficult process. There's a lot of technical expertise and knowledge involved in a hacking attack. So what hackers do is, instead of hacking, they, what they do is they use an easier, yet more effective way, which is known as social engineering. Social engineering, in simple words, is the art of manipulating people so that they give away their personal information. What hackers do is, they don't hack into systems. They hack into humans so that humans give away their information. Generally, a social engineering attack consists of four phases. The first phase is preparation or footprinting. In this stage, the hacker gathers information about the victim. And social media has made it very easy for the hacker to gather information about the victim. People post everything on, the, on, on social media. The second stage is interaction stage. In this stage, the hackers interact, interact with the victim. They build a relationship of trust with the victim. And once the trust is built, in the third stage, the exploitation stage, they exploit the victims. And once the exploitation is done, like any other intelligent thief would do, they would just clear off their tracks. It might be deactivating the social media account they use, or it might be deactivating the email account they used, or it could be just simply deact or de destroying the SIM card they used. Now that you have understood the four stages of a social engineering attack, let me share you an incident which happened with me. It was a Sunday afternoon, I was scrolling through Facebook. I received a friend request from a very old friend of mine, Ajay. Ajay was already on my friend list. Still, I accepted the request thinking that this might be his new account. We had a conversation. We asked each other about our whereabouts. It was a good conversation. But in the evening, Ajay sent me a message. I started to read the message in Ajay's voice. This is a habit with most of us. Whenever we receive a message from someone close to us, we start to read it in their voice. So I started to read it. The message said Ajay wanted to transfer 15,000 rupees to his father's account, but he was not able to do so because of some problems with the UPI app. And he said as it was a Sunday, he is not able to contact the bank. So he was asking me a favor if I could transfer 15,000 rupees to his father, and he would repay it to me next day itself. I, was, I could empathize with Ajay's problem. I could understand the problems with the UPI app. But I was still confused. Why is he asking me all this over a Facebook chat? He could have just simply called me. So what I did was, I had Ajay's old number. I rang him up. Ajay was completely surprised to listen to this. He was shocked. He was unaware on the, about the conversation on Facebook. He was afraid that his account might be hacked. He said, let me just check what is happening. And even I did the same. I scanned through that account. I saw that the profile picture, cover picture, the bio, the list of friends was same as Ajay's. But the account was recently created, three days ago, and had only 20 friends. While I was scanning this, I saw a status update from Ajay, which said he was urging people not to fall prey to this scam or fraud where someone is asking for money on his behalf, because one of his friends ended up paying 15,000 rupees to the hacker. She thought it was a genuine request, and she ended up losing money. So what happened here wasn't a hacking attempt. Nobody hacked into Ajay's account. What the hacker did was a clever social engineering attempt known as impersonation. The hacker used Ajay's identity, his profile picture, cover picture, and he used his identity to ask for a financial favor. He used the four stages of social engineering attack. In the preparation stage, he gathered information about Ajay, his profile picture, his cover picture, his friends, and once he had gathered the information, in the interaction stage, the second stage, he interacted with Ajay's friends, like he interacted with me. He built a relationship of trust with the victims. And in the third stage, once the trust was built, he exploited the victims by asking for a financial favor. And once one of his friends fell prey to it, she ended up transferring 15,000 rupees. In the fourth stage, the clearing of track stage, he deactivated the social media account and disappeared. Now, attacks like this are successful due to the human emotions involved in it. Emotional, you know, emotional factors like trust, helpfulness, empathy were exploited in this attack. 
Likewise, there's greed. Now I have a question for you guys. How many of you have seen, uh, how many of you have received an email or an SMS which says you have won a lottery worth rupees 100 million and you need to pay a token amount of rupees 1000 or rupees 10,000 to redeem the lottery? Similar kind of messages most of us have received, right? And most of us even laugh to it thinking that this is a scam because we know that it is a scam. But there are some people who think that this is, not a, this is a genuine lottery and they end up losing money because they are not aware about the attack. In the same manner, there's fear. This could be a phone call posing from your insurance company and saying that your insurance for the month is due. The premium for your month is due. And if you don't pay it right away, then you might, uh, you might be penalized or there must, there, must, there must be consequences of it. So out of fear of being penalized, people end up doing the transaction on phone call itself and end up losing money. Next one is curiosity. Now boys over here, I have a question for you. If you see a video on YouTube of which the thumbnail says, boys, please do not click on this video. It is only for girls. Then what will you do? Click on it, right? So in the same manner, if you see a phishing mail which says, your Flipkart order worth rupees 3,500 has been shipped, click here to view details. Even if you haven't ordered anything from Flipkart, you'll end up clicking on the view details button just out of curiosity to see what has been shipped and you might end up downloading a virus or a malware or anything that could be used against you. In the same manner, there's social proof. Social proof is the reason why there are laughter tracks in sitcoms. If 10 people are laughing to a joke, you're more likely to laugh to it. In the same manner, if a hacker shows you an evidence that 10 people in your area have subscribed to a scheme, you're more likely to subscribe to that Ponzi scheme and you might end up losing money. So these were a few emotional leverages involved in a social engineering attack. Now, let, to, to understand it better, let me share a recent incident which happened with a friend of mine. So Nidhi wanted to sell her old television on an online exchange place. So she listed it worth rupees 12,000. It was an overpriced deal for an old TV, but she listed it anyway. She got a deal for rupees 12,000, but the person said, I need the TV urgently. If you are ready to pay the, if you are ready to give the TV to me today itself, I am ready to pay the amount up front. Nidhi was happy. She had got a great deal for an old television. The person then even sent her a verification proof, the ID, his ID proof, which said he was an employee of some reputable bank. Nidhi then, uh, the person then called Nidhi up and said, let's do the transaction in advance itself so that it will be quicker for me to get the TV later. Nidhi said, okay, we'll do the transaction in advance. He called Nidhi up. He said, her, I'll send you a QR code. He sent her a QR code in which in small letters it was written, scan code to receive money. The person on phone call said, scan the code with your UPI app and you'll receive the money. Nidhi then scanned the code, but she got a pop-up which asked her to enter her PIN code. Now Nidhi was a bit confused. She took a step back, like why am I asking, why am I supposed to enter my PIN over here? But the person on the phone call said, this is how it works. I'm an employee of a bank, I know it better, and this is how it works. Nidhi was still taking time to think, but the person was still continuously pressurizing her, saying that you have to do it right now, or I might get it from somewhere else. I've already told you that this is an urgent requirement. Nidhi then, out of pressure and urgency, ended up entering her PIN and ended up submitting it. The person then said, thank you, and he disconnected the call. After the person disconnected the call, she received an SMS from a bank saying that 12,000 rupees has been debited from her account. She ended up paying money instead of receiving it. So remember, whenever you take decisions on the internet, take a step back, think, and then act. If you don't do that, you might end up in trouble. In the same way, there are a few other tips which you should take care of while on the internet. The first one is the whole purpose of this talk. Also what I do for a living is cyber awareness. If you are aware about such camps, if you are reading about such camps, if you knew what is happening in the cyber world, you are less likely to fall prey to such camps. The second one is, keep your social media accounts private. If your social media accounts are public, then, you might, uh, then the hacker might be able to scan your accounts and he might be, get, uh, he might be getting information about the, your accounts. So if your social media accounts are private, you won't ha help the hacker in the pre preparation stage of the social engineering attack. In the same manner, 
follow some basic password hygiene tips, like using a strong password, using two-factor authentication, and also do not use the same password on all of your accounts. What people generally do is, they use the same password on Amazon, Google, YouTube, Netflix, everywhere. And what, what happens in this case is, when a hacker gets access to one of the accounts, he'll get access to everything. So please don't do that. Remember, internet is a jungle. So stay aware and stay safe. Thank you.